versus the Mumbledy Mumbledy Pig game. The rain had stopped by nightfall. Peter left the house for work. Just as the courthouse clock struck ten, he had wasted his precious napping hours pouring over the Harbor Dasher's box. So he was exhausted before even setting foot outside. He winced at the thought of how difficult the night ahead of him would be. Mr. Seamus never met idle threats, and unless Peter wanted to get a beating, he needed to steal a great deal of food before sunrise. Peter figured the best place to start would be with the harbor, the harbor dasher. He knew firsthand that the man had a purse overflowing with coins, and that velvet bag alone would be enough to satisfy Mr. Seamus. While the boy told himself that this was the reason he was searching for the harbor dasher, the real reason was something different. All he got was Peter was burning, had, had a burning desire to learn more about the strange little eggs in the little box. Every drop of his burgling sense told him that six yolks were worth far more than his entire life. Stealing put all put together. Sneaking past Uncle Kit Nick Picnic Nack's pawn shop, where he often did business and shuttered stands along Market Road, where he also did business. Peter finally reached the place where the harbor dasher had been stationed. He sniffed the cold air for any sign of the man's trail. Nothing. He dropped to the ground and felt for wheel tracks in the puddle. Nothing. He swept the, sh the streets, haunted the inns, and scored the docks. But he found not a single clue. It was as though the man had never been there. The only proof of his existence was the, bo was the box tucked under Peter's arm and the great mystery that came with it. Peter was growing frustrated. He had spent hours trying to find the, the elusive harbor dasher and still had two nights worth of burgling ahead of him. If only I had someone to tell me what these eggs really are, he muttered as he slid out of the stairs windows with four candlesticks, two cuckoo clocks, and a cheap leather skull cap. His, his thoughts were interrupted by a sudden scream. Screams, as you know, are dreadful, shrill noises that tiresome people make when they want attention. They are rarely effective, as most hearers simply plug their ears and go on about their business. But there is another kind of scream that cannot be ignored so easily. The cry of a creature facing death. A, a primal desperate gasp that speaks not to ears but to the but to the very flip of our beings. Peter had heard that sound only once before when freeing himself from a bag of drowning kittens. He was now hearing the terrible scream again, and it was very close. Peter stood stock still on the roof edge. One of the most important skills that any burglar must master is remaining still. <laughs> the less glamorous and than safe cracking and the wall and wall skin. It is just as useful. Mr. S after Mr. Seamus's training, the boy had learned how to stop his heart from beating so that guard dogs would ignore him in the dark in the darkness. His this trick had thus fared far failed to work on killing. Peter listened to the cold night air. The first scream had been so short that he had missed the exact location. A few moments later, he heard the cry again. It was one of the animals by the town stables. stables. Peter weighed the half-empty bag around his, so his shoulder. He had a lot of burgling to do and couldn't afford another distraction. The scream, the screaming continued until he could bear it no longer. 
he stole his loot and went to investigate. Peter raced through the town until he came to a small alley that ran that that ran behind the stables. He could hear what sounded like a horse neigh. Nay. He heard other sounds too, jeering voices and the occasional clatter of metal against cobbles. The, the alley made a sharp turn, and Peter's foot caught against an old jaw. Jill. He stumbled, almost dropping his precious box of eggs. Regaining his balance, he poked his head around the moon, the moonlit corner to listen. What a shot, someone cheered. Right on the strike. That's a fault. Blade got it turned twice. Another whine. Shut up and throw already. Peter inched closer, trying to assess the situation. The animal smelled like a nag or a mule. <laughs> he couldn't be certain to, sleep, to close the stables. Whatever the breed it was putting up quite a struggle. Just then, a deep voice spoke, silencing the others. Step aside, you babies. Let me show you how it's done. The words sent a chill down Peter's spine. He recognized that voice. That belonged to Pencil Poopson. Pencil Poopson was the meanest, nastiest, most dangerous boy in the world. He was several, several, several years older than Peter and twice his size. Pencil was also an orphan, but for different reasons. Reasons. Altogether, it was said that when he turned eight, his father, a drunk, a drunk, drunkard, facing Depter's Dep prison, had sold his son as a cabin boy to a local mm. ship's captain. Wow. Pencil was a, a deathly afraid of the water, and he refused to go. When his parents tried forcing him, he overpowered them both, both mother and father, and dispatched them with a pencil. He had been using a grammar lesson. That was how he had gotten the, his name. Shortly after orphaning himself, Pencil, Pencil assembled a crew of the vilest, most heartless boys in town. They called themselves the Mumblity, Mumblity Peg For those of you who have <laughs> it was known, it was known that these boys were so tough that instead of aiming at the ground, they aimed at each other's feet, or even worse, at the feet of whatever unlucky victim they managed to court. Peter sorted through the shouts, cries, and clanging from the alley. It sounded like there were five boys out tonight, plus one victim. From the, the scuffling of their steps, Peter concluded that the game must have pinned the animal to the ground and was trying to get the knife to land on its back Peter pressed himself against the wall, glad he was safely hidden, or at least he thought he was hidden. The very next moment, the game, the game was interrupted by a shout. Oi! Who goes? One of them hollered in Peter's direction. I thought I'd seen something move by the shriek. The rest of the game turned and stepped closer. Peter remained completely still. He could tell by the coolness of his skin that he was standing in a shadow away 